so okay good morning everyone so the session is live now okay so before starting the session i will request everybody to keep yourself muted okay only if required you just unmute and ask the doubts even if you have some disturbance in your background please ask your doubt in chat section we'll give you proper time at the end also okay so please cooperate in a smooth conduction of the session thank you all all the best so sir it's over to you you can start <clears throat> okay so uh, good morning everyone so uh, i hope it's nice sunday to you so yes sir good morning yeah. so till now uh, we were discussing about you know an introductory part of the electric vehicle we uh, discuss how electric vehicle is working and all then we did uh, discuss some uh, battery design battery calculation and all today uh, we will be talking about some vehicle level integration of the electric vehicle uh, what is the power required what is the torque required what is the rpm required for the electric vehicle and then how you know uh, it could be integrated with the motor and how power torque uh, is required by the motor and then how uh, it comes to the battery part so those all calculations we will be doing and i hope you will be getting uh, uh, to enjoy it okay so uh, my screen is already visible to everyone i guess Uh, just uh, yes, sir. Um, yes sir yeah thank you so <clears throat> need of electric motor in ev so basically what is happening when you go for an full electric vehicle uh, there are two major components of electric vehicle and that is uh, battery and second one is the uh, motor so battery basically what is happening battery gives the power to the motor and motor uh, runs the vehicle now motor is uh, only a propelling uh, part of the vehicle which gives a uh, gives a uh, necessary power or necessary which gives a necessary torque to move your vehicle so in a simple statement we can say all electric vehicles have one thing in common and that is that all of use electric motors to drive the vehicle right and however these motors are available with number of variations in stage size and method of operation the torque required from vehicle to obtain desired characteristic is the same and it is the torque that forms the part of the force to drive the wheels and set the vehicle in motion in simple term the torque may be defined the turning power of the motor basically what i mean to say ki in each and every vehicle whether it is two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler bus truck whatever it is there they are if it is electric vehicle they will be having a motor and depending upon size and all depending upon weight and all the motor requirement will get changed okay someone uh, so each and every motor is having some rating for example any electrical accessory like a switch a simple switch that is having some rating ki this much of volt and this much of current right similarly this motor and also is having some voltage uh, current uh, some power some uh, torque some uh, rpm uh, ratings are there right so we can't use any random motor for your application you have to calculate something and on the basis of that you will be choosing a motor required for your vehicle correct so before going that just for a basic introduction there are various configuration of the uh, uh, motor power train as well in the vehicle for example in ic engine we have you know uh, all wheel drive two wheel uh, two wheel drive something like that similarly in electric vehicle also we have we have uh, different uh, you know uh, power train requirement okay one is single motor power train in this kind of power train what is happening there is only one motor either in uh, you know uh, rear or either in uh, front and that is connected with the two wheels to rotate it okay so this is called single motor power train apart from that we have multi motor power train so there are three kinds of multi motor power train could be possible one is dual motor power train in which one motor will be in front and one motor will be in rear both the motor will be connected with the two wheels and it will be propelling your vehicle in triple motor power train one motor is in front and two motors are in rear and the front motor is connected with the both the two wheels and the in rear this uh, two motor for the individual wheels okay and in the four motor uh, power train is something like four four wheel drive so all the four wheels uh, is integrated with the four individual motors and in that manner uh, you can be uh, able to propel your vehicle uh, if i give an example normally 
all the electric vehicle a basic you know uh, basic electric vehicles have been uh, each uh, only single power train single motor power train tesla and all comes with so uh, you know dual and triple motor power trains uh, different configuration are there some uh, you know uh, high configuration or you can say uh, off road kind of or semi truck kind of like for example rivian so rivian is having four motor power train okay so uh, that could be different different configuration of your motor drive train uh, for your electric vehicle cases so so uh, so our main agenda to integrate a vehicle so once you uh, you know uh, talk about integration level of the vehicle at that time you required a you know how much torque and how much uh, power how much rpm your vehicle is required okay so before that before going that we will be calculating on the basis of what we can get some force for example your vehicle is there on the stationary condition and at a stationary condition it needs some force to drive your vehicle right or your vehicle is running at some kilometer per hour like some velocity for example 20 km per hour or 40 km per hour and to convert that velocity to 80 km per hour or any desired uh, velocity you need some extra effort you need some extra power to accelerate that right correct everyone so first we will be calculating all the basic uh, basic force which is resisting your vehicle which you need to overcome to drive your vehicle okay and then at last we will be adding all those four and then uh, will be uh, calculating the power and torque required for your electric motor so basically there are four factors which are affecting the required torque by your motor or by your wheel so when selecting the drive motor for the electric vehicle a number of factors must be taken into account to determine the maximum torque required so n number of forces are there but i considered only four which are the major factor of the uh, you know uh, to overcome for your electric vehicle or any kind of vehicle first one is rolling resistance second one is grade resistance third one is acceleration force and fourth one is aerodynamic drag so basically when a uh, please mute your set please mute yourself so basically there are four forces which we need to overcome when we have to drive your vehicle so all the forces are rolling resistance grade resistance acceleration force and aerodynamic drag if you see a wire diagram of the same how it is acting on the vehicle suppose this is a slope okay this is a inclined uh, road is there and this is my vehicle okay so we have to overcome different different things like we need to run on in upward direction so there would be a rolling resistance which is affecting on to the wheel in the downward direction there would be a you know uh, this grade resistance uh, and which uh, one of the direction would be mg sin theta so i will be discussing how it is happening so this torque all this torque whatever like four force forces will be there and we will be calculating the torque so this torque can be obtained by directly mounting a motor with the torque value on the differential of the vehicle or by using a gear box or chain drive or belt drive to magnify a lesser torque to this value before it drives the wheel okay so one by one we will be talking about all these four rolling resistance grade resistance acceleration force and aerodynamic drag okay first one is rolling resistance so basically rolling resistance is suppose this is a wheel you are able to see this wheel right so suppose this is a wheel and when this wheel turning onto the road this is a road you can see road is not a complete flat there are some micro roughness is there you can be able to see to uh, you can be able to see here right so some roughness is there so when your wheel is uh, turning onto the road there are some friction there are some resistance uh, creating by the road to the wheel okay and that resistance is called rolling resistance clear so rolling resistance is basically opposing force that the vehicle has to overcome due to rolling motion between the wheels and the surface of motion of the vehicle the ro rolling resistance depend upon the coefficient of rolling friction which varies depending upon the material of tires and 
roughness of the surface of motion. The rolling resistance can be calculated is RR, rolling resistance, is GVW, gross vehicle weight into CRR. CRR is coefficient of rolling resistance. So, CRR is basically coefficient of rolling resistance. It depends mainly on to the surface quality of the road. Clear? So basically, uh, you can see there are concrete road, asphalt roads, dam roads, snow, dirt, mud, grass, sand, many kind of road could be possible. And for that different, different rolling, uh, this uh, coefficient of rolling resistance are there, these all are constant. So there is a list of that, okay? You can pick up uh, from here and you can be able to calculate that, clear? Moving ahead. Grade resistance. So, suppose when you are you have to climb uh, a hill, climb a hill when the road is not uh, flat, road is in inclined way. So that time, due to the gradient, due to the gradient, you have to apply some extra effort to climb that road or to climb that uh, a hill. Clear? So that is called grade resistance so when when there is an inclined uh, surface when there, there is an inclined road at that time also some uh, you know uh, some force is there which is act, acting in opposite direction of the travel and that force is called grade resistance and we can calculate grade resistance so grade resistance is the form of gravitational force and it is the force that tends to pull the vehicle back when it is climbing an inclined surface so basically what is happening suppose the weight always acting in the, uh, you know, towards center of the uh, earth. So this is the G, Mg. Suppose this is the Mg. And if we divide this, then one factor will be in this direction and one factor will be in perpendicular direction of the uh, vehicle. So that force will not be acting on the wheel, but the another force which is acting in this direction, that will be creating a opposition. So just that could be calculated as gr equal to gvw into sin theta gr is grade resistance and theta is the grade of inclination angle so you can see uh, just here so this is mg okay this is mg so if we divide into two, two parts this would be the mg cos theta which is acting perpendicular to the surface of the earth and this is mg sin theta which is acting parallel to the surface of the earth but in opposite direction of the uh, uh, movement of the vehicle. Clear? So that force uh, will be acting opposite direction of the movement of the vehicle and that is called mg sin theta. So that is mg sin theta or gvw. gvw is gross vehicle weight. So m into g is called gross vehicle weight. Okay. And theta is the grade or inclination angle. Whatever the inclination angle would be there, it could be 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 2 degree, 10 degree, 20 degree, something like that. Okay. Acceleration force. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Yes. Yeah, you please speak a bit louder. Like voice is coming a bit slow. Okay, okay. Now it's clear. Yeah. And next, uh, guys, you also have to interact. Like if sir is asking something, you don't have disturbance, you just unmute and ask. Okay. Don't uh, one one-sided session, okay? We can do one thing. So we just let me just explain all this, and yeah. at last we can have a discussion. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Thank you, thank that you. Would, so thank that you. this can uh, go in a smooth way. Okay, okay. Okay. Third one is acceleration force. So you know everyone, uh, Newton's uh, first law and second law. First law is law of inertia. So when any vehicle, uh, not any vehicle, like when any object wants to be in same uh, you know uh, situation in which it is suppose a object in uh, rest motion it always want to be in rest motion suppose a object is uh, you know uh, uh, moving at a constant velocity it always want to be in that motion itself okay and that is called first law of motion second law of motion is that ki if you want to change that if you want to change that then you need 
some force to do that okay you have to apply some force to do that suppose for example there is a body which is in uh, kept in uh, you know uh, kept in uh, a stationary condition at that time to move that you need to apply some force on to that similarly for example any object is uh, you know moving at a constant velocity and to increase the velocity of that you need to apply some extra effort you need to apply some extra force and that is called acceleration force clear so acceleration force is the force that helps the vehicle to reach at a predefined speed from rest in a specified period of time the motor torque bears a direct relationship with the acceleration force better the torque lesser the time required by the vehicle to reach a given speed the acceleration force is a function of the mass of the vehicle so acceleration force is calculated as f equal to ma okay m equal to g v w by g okay so uh, uh, f is acceleration force m is mass of the vehicle g is acceleration due to gravity and a is the required acceleration okay clear third one is sorry last one is fourth one is aerodynamic drag whenever you runs whenever you walks some air is resisting you to move forward you, you can be able to uh, feel it when you are driving a bike okay when you are driving a bike at a lower speed you don't, don't feel that much of resistance but as you increase the speed you can feel the resistance of air on your frontal area like chest and all abdomen and all at that area you will be feeling some resistance correct am i right yes, yes sir and yes, and and to overcome uh, that some you know hero kind of students are there they used to you know complete incline in the way of the vehicle to reduce the air resistance it happens you all observe that right yes, yes sir yeah So similarly, greater the frontal area, greater the aerodynamic drag. So, uh, greater the effort we have to apply to overcome the resistance, this aerodynamic drag, aer this air resistance. Clear? You can see here, this frontal area is greater. So, what is happening? Once air is uh, coming here and all, and air is, this blue one is here. Okay, so it coming uh, passing out, and due to that, in this area, some thrust is creating. and thus sorry some vacuum is creating and due to that it push the vehicle in the opposite direction but when the design is proper when the design is proper then there is no uh, you know vacuums and all has been created so it is uh, the greater design right so this basically uh, you know depends upon the frontal area of the vehicle so aerodynamic drag is the resistance offered by air while driving and it majorly depends upon the vehicle frontal area and speed of the vehicle the greater the frontal area and the speed greater will be the aerodynamic drag aerodynamic drag can be calculated as ad equal to half rho cd av square ad is aerodynamic drag rho is air density that is constant at 27 degree celsius ambient temperature that is called 1.2 kg per cubic meter v is velocity of the vehicle and a is the frontal area of the vehicle and cd is the drag coefficient okay once i again i am repeating all those for your convenience so th there are basically four types of the forces which are assisting the vehicle to move on the road rolling resistance grade resistance acceleration force and aerodynamic drag so rolling resistance is uh, uh, the resisting force which which affects on the rolling of the wheel which is majorly generated by the surface of the road and that can be calculated rolling resistance equal to gvw gross vehicle uh, weight into crr coefficient of rolling resistance okay there are various values of the coefficient of rolling resistance depending upon the quality and types of the road okay third one the second one is the gradient resistance whenever you are uh, you know climbing on a wheel uh, like uh, there is an inclined road or gradient road at that time you need to apply some extra effort because due to gravity gravity will be pulling the vehicle in the backward direction okay and that is called gvw sin theta you can see here so uh, this is mg and this direction will be the, which is perpendicular to that that will be mg cos theta and in di this direction it will be mg sin theta we are deriving thus uh, the uh, this into the two different direction and due to that this force will be 
pulling the vehicle in the opposite direction so you need to overcome that as well the third one is the acceleration force whenever you have to you know shift your speed from one particular velocity to uh, second velocity at that time also you need to apply some extra effort extra force extra force and that is called acceleration force okay and that could be calculated uh, by ma and last one we have the aerodynamic drag aerodynamic drag is the air assistance offered by the frontal area of the vehicle majorly and that is called ad aerodynamic drag equal to half 0.5 pro cdav square clear everyone yes sir yes sir yes So now, what we will be happening? I, as I told you, these each four major force which we need to overcome. Okay, we need to overcome all these forces. These four forces. So we will be adding all those force. So that is called total tractive effort. Total tractive effort is equal to R R rolling resistance, G R grade resistance, F A acceleration force, and A D aerodynamic drag. The total tractive effort is the total force required to move the vehicle with the desired characteristic, and is the sum of the forces calculated in our four sections. Okay, clear? Now, torque required on the drive wheel. What torque we need on the drive wheel? So the torque that is required on the drive wheel will be the one that The drive motor is required to produce so as to obtain by the desired drive characteristic. So I am calculating the torque required by the motor. So this motor will be supplying this desired torque to the wheel, and it between that from motor to wheel there would be some losses, right? So I am uh, taking it as a friction factor. So generally the torque is force into radius of the wheel. Okay. Torque is force into radius of the wheel. So force is total tractive effort into radius of the wheel. But I am uh, multiplying by R F. That is friction factor, which is happening between motor to between the transmission between motor to the wheel. Clear? Friction factor that accounts for frictional losses between bearing axle and its wheel. And R wheel is the radius of the drive wheel. So this way you can calculate the torque required by a motor. Okay? Clear? if you are willing to calculate in a more precise way okay then what will be happening uh, to to go there to go there just have a uh, a normal guide so this is a guideline for the tire size guideline because it will help it it is required to calculate it more precise so uh, before doing that just have a introduction of the tire size guide so whenever there is a tire on that tire is written there This kind of uh, you know uh, uh, something is written over there. Anyone uh, notice that whenever you see a tire, or this kind of nomenclature is there. Clear? Yes. So first one, the first yeah. digit, this one ninety five. This say the section width of the tire, whatever the width of the tire, that is one ninety five mm is the width of the tire. Okay. The second one, this fifty five, it says he what is the height of the tire. From rim to this, you know, you can see from rim to this. What is the height of the tire? That is percentage of the width of the tire. So aspect ratio. This is called aspect ratio. The tire height as a percentage of the width. Okay. So 55 means the tire height is one 55 percent of this. Tire height is the 55 percent of the uh, section width of the tire. Okay. So if you uh, calculate the one fifty-five uh, percent uh, of the one ninety-five, whatever the value will be, you will be getting that will be the height of the tire from here to here. Clear? R means radial construction. All the tires are in radial construction. Sixteen. The this digit tells this diameter of the rim. Okay. This digit tells the diameter of the rim. This digit tells the load rating of the tire. Okay. And uh, this uh, will uh, this way. Uh, You know, digit tells us the speed rotating of the tire. Okay. 
so that is the nomenclature of the tire so uh, i will be coming up how it could be helping us to calculate that so we have calculated this total tractive effort and we took as a took a simple you know uh, this friction factor and we calculated the torque required by the motor if we try to if we want to calculate in more precise way then once we have a, a torque okay uh, sorry once we have a torque okay so we can do one thing how to calculate the torque torque required is equal to total tractive effort into radius of the wheel that will be torque required by, by the wheel okay now each and every motor to wheel there are some uh, you know transmission ratio is there okay and that transmission for example i am taking 10 is to 1 okay that transmission ratio is 10 is to 1 so we can do one thing depending using this formula we can calculate the torque rpn and power in a very precise way so i am just coming to that how we can calculate that okay but before going that just have a look uh, for uh, formula like n motor by n wheel equal to n and n t motor by t wheel equal to 1 by n and the power required is 2 pi nt by 60. So I have basic, I have kept few, you know, uh, what we can say, predefined uh, uh, some values are there. And on the basis of that, we will be calculating the uh, other things. So I'm just opening the calculator, okay, and a notepad. So uh, you can be able to see my notepad, my calculator, really? and my PowerPoint. So, three, all three should no, be sir. visible to you. Okay. No, sir, we can't. Like you have to share the full screen, I guess. No, uh, right now uh, you are able to see my PPT screen. PPT. Sir, only PPT screen. Now notepad is also visible. No. No, sir. No. Notepad is not visible. No. no sir. Okay. Uh, you uh, better you just uh, stop sharing. Yeah, and understood. 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 Just a moment. Yeah. yeah. So now you can see calculator. Yeah. The notepad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's start the calculation and please be very attentive. This is very important. Okay. So first we need to calculate all the rolling resistance, the grade resistance, the aerodynamic drag, and the uh, acceleration force required. Okay. So I have my notepad and the calculator. This four I will be working on. Okay. So I already have few uh, predefined uh, values. Okay. This gross vehicle weight is uh, 800 into 9.8. The mass of the vehicle is 800 kg. I took the CRR co coefficient of rolling resistance 0 0.017. Theta, I took the same sine, sine 10 degree, that would be 0 0.1736. Acceleration, I took 13.87 meter per second square. Velocity, I took 16 kilometer per hour, that is 16.66 meter per second. S is 10 second. Okay, that is from 0 to 60 kilometer per hour. How much time is required? So I could be okay. I wish to get this uh, from 0 to 60 kilometer in 10 seconds. Okay, CD, that is called, you know, uh, drag coefficient is 0 0.3. And area, this is uh, a normal vehicle, so that is having 16.52 is a uh, length and width of this frontal area, and that will be giving us 2.5 meter square the area. Okay. So let's calculate that. So first, I need to calculate the rolling resistance. Okay. Rolling resistance rolling resistance equal to i told you gross vehicle weight into c r r okay so as i told you 
mass is 800 kg so gross vehicle will, weight will be 800 into 9.8 9.8 is the acceleration due to gravity clear and that is 7840 newton you all clear yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah. so it would be 7840 into crr i have taken 0.017 you also calculate so if i have done any mistake you can be able to correct me so 7840 into 0.017 and that will give me 133.28 133.28 this would be rolling resistance and this would be in newton okay second one is grade resistance grade i resistance and i told you grade resistance is again gross sorry gross vehicle weight into sin theta fine uh, how to write theta here it's difficult okay i am writing as please don't mind ha huh? because in notepad it would be difficult to write so that would be gross vehicle weight i already have 7840 into sin theta i took that as a grade, uh, this grade inclination is 10 degree so sin 10 degree would be 0.0176 okay sorry 0.1736 clear into so this will give 7840 into 0.1 Seven three six. This would give. Sorry, I have. Yeah, seven eight four zero into zero point one seven three six. This would be one three six one point zero one three six one point zero two four two. Clear. third one is acceleration force acceleration force so how i have calculated this acceleration force equal to uh, ma m into a and this would be calculated as mass into acceleration so mass i already have sorry mass already have this 800 kg so 800 into acceleration 800 into acceleration what is the value of acceleration acceleration is 13.87 meter per second square 13.87 how this came anyone can guess see what i have done mm. just a moment okay so what i have done i have uh you know the formula b square minus sorry minus u square equal to to a s okay this is very basic formula so i am taking ki i have to move from 0 to 60 km per hour okay so u will be 0 u is initial velocity v is final velocity you are aware about this basic formula so u would be 0 okay u would be 0 v is i have v is 60 km per hour 60 km per hour means 60 into 1000 divided by 60 again divided by sorry 60 into 1000 divided by 60 divided by 60 again divided by 60 this much meter per second okay understood because we have to calculate in the si unit right so 16 in 16 Point six seven 
this whole square okay equal to sorry, equal to 2 a a is I have to calculate and s is i told you i need in 10 seconds okay clear 2 into a into clear and by this you can calculate the oscillation and that would be uh, this uh, uh, 13.87 meter per second square clear okay so by here i i calculated that so now oscillation force would be 800 into 13.87 and that would be 800 into 13.87 and that would be 11 sorry 0 0.96 this is the force required for the acceleration and last one is aerodynamic drag aerodynamic drag so aerodynamic drag equal to uh, equal to half 0 0.5 into rho, rho. how to write rho here okay H rho into C D C D into A area central area into V velocity square P into V clear clear everyone sir ye R H O kya hai aur C D kya hai sir uh, I told you aerody aerodynamic drag equal to half rho P D A V square Half is zero point five. Rho is uh, density of the air, and C D is the uh, this uh, uh, drag coefficient, and A is the area of the uh, frontal area of the vehicle. V square V into V velocity. Clear? Since this is not part, I am not able to write the V square. That's why. Clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. So how I will be calculating zero point five into rho? So rho is you know uh, constant that is 1.2 at room temperature uh, around 27 degrees Celsius that is 1.2 uh, kilogram per cubic meter okay and then uh, I took the drag coefficient for a normal vehicle something like Tata Nano or uh, Maruti like a normal hatchback car I took the drag coefficient uh, sorry drag coefficient at 0 0.3 okay and then uh, area frontal area also i have took 2.5 meter square and then velocity is required is 16.66 into 16.66 so that would be giving us let me calculate it okay so 0 0.5 into 1.2 into 0 0.5 into 1.2 into 0 0.3 into 2.5 into 16.66 into 16.66. This would be 124.9 newton. Clear? And let me cross check the acceleration force because this value is very high. So 800 mass into acceleration into 13.87 correct so this one the total force we have right so now we calculate all the total force total force will be total force is equal to uh, 133.28 plus 133.2 plus 
जीरो टू फोर प्लस इलेवन जीरो नाइन सिक्स इलेवन जीरो नाइन सिक्स प्लस लास्ट वन इज वन ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट नाइन वन ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट क्लियर आई विल बी एडिंग दैट दैट विल बी इक्वल टू इलेवन जीरो नाइन सिक्स प्लस वन ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट नाइन प्लस थर्टीन सिक्स वन पॉइंट जीरो टू फोर प्लस वन थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट टू एट इट वुड बी ट्वेल्व सेवन वन फाइव ट्वेल्व सेवन वन फाइव ओके पॉइंट टू this newton force would be required for this uh, you know now we have calculated the total force now torque we need to calculate clear so torque equal to torque equal to force into radius so total force into radius here total force 12 715 715 i am calculate i am taking only the integer value okay into radius so for radius generally i am taking the 12 inch uh, you know uh, this uh, diameter of the uh, wheel so i am considering the radius as a 0.3 mm meter okay so this will be giving us equal 715 12715 into 3 3814 that is torque will be required 3814 okay That is the torque required. Okay, clear. I'm getting the values very high. But now torque we have calculated. Now we cal have to calculate the RPM. RPM. So RPM would be. Speed. So this is the torque required by the wheel to propel the vehicle. Clear? Now we are calculating the RPM of the uh, this you know um, wheel required. Okay? And then up de depending upon that we will be calculating the torque and RPM required by the motor. So RPM equal to speed per minute. Speed per minute. Per minute divided by perimeter of the perimeter of the wheel. Okay, so I have speed per minute. Speed per minute would be sixteen point six six. That is meter per second into sixty. That would be uh, speed per minute. Clear? Divided by Two into perimeter of the vehicle two pi r two into three point one four into r radius of the vehicle is zero point three. Clear? So it would be. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Yes. Uh, we are getting some comments on YouTube. Like the sound is low. Like while you are calculating, please speak bit louder. Like okay, now clear? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 No problem. so uh, this uh, uh, speed per minute by perimeter of the wheel that will be giving you the rpm so i already told you the uh, speed per second that is 16.66 meter per second if i need to convert that into meter uh, sorry speed uh, uh, per minute then 16.66 into 60 that would be speed per minute clear so i am writing 9.6 yes sir Sorry, two point three point. Sorry, no, no, two. 
इन टू दिस इज टू इन टू क्लियर डिवाइड बाई टू इंटू थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर इंटू जीरो पॉइंट थ्री टू पाई आर दैट इज वन पॉइंट एट एट फोर वन पॉइंट एट एट फोर क्लियर सो दैट विल बी गिविंग अस दी आर पी एम सो ओके सो आर पी एम वुड बी ट्रिपल नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स डिवाइड बाई वन पॉइंट एट एट फोर सो दिस वुड बी फाइव थर्टी आई एम कंसिडरिंग दी ओनली दी इंटीजर ओके सो फाइव थर्टी आर पी एम ओके क्लियर दिस इज दी टॉर्क एंड आर पी एम रिक्वायर्ड बाई दी व्हील ओके नाउ आई एम कंसिडरिंग की वेन वी आर ट्रांसमिटिंग दी यू नो देर इज ए ट्रांसमिशन फ्रॉम मोटर टू व्हील सो आई एम कंसिडरिंग दी ट्रांसमिशन रेशियो ट्रांसमिशन रेशियो इज टेन इज टू वन ओके और टेन इज टू वन वुड बी मच हायर ओके टेन इज टू वन नो प्रॉब्लम टेन इज टू वन सो इन दिस के वाट विल बी हैपनिंग नाउ आई नीड टू कैलकुलेट दी आर पी एम ऑफ द मोटर एंड टॉर्क ऑफ द मोटर क्लियर Yes, sir. So, n RPM of the motor M O T RPM of the motor by n of the wheel will be equal to n. That is n is uh, this uh, transmission ratio. Clear? So n motor will be n motor. Will be equal to ten into sorry, yeah, n ten into uh, this uh, n wheel. So n wheel is five thirty rpm. Clear? Five thirty. So this would be giving us five three double zero. This is the rpm. Now we are getting clear. Clear? Now we are calculating the torque. So for torque. Similarly, torque of the motor, M O T, torque of the motor by torque of the wheel, torque of the wheel will be equal to one by n. Clear? So, torque of the motor will be torque of the motor. Will be equal to torque of the wheel by n. Torque of the motor will be torque of the wheel by n. So torque of the wheel is uh, torque of the wheel is three eight one four, right? Three eight one four divided by uh, ratio that is ten. So we need we need sorry. Uh, if I divide by ten, then three eighty one. Three eighty one. Newton of torque is required by the motor. Clear? This one. Hello, all. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, yes, yes. So now this is the rating of the torque, and this is the rating of the RPM is required by the motor. Okay. Now we have to calculate the power required by the motor. So power is always for the motor. For the motor, power is equal to. Power equal to two. Sorry, two into pi. Ah, uh, pi. Okay, pi into two pi n t divided by sixty. Okay, so here power will be equal to two into three three point one four. Two pi n. What is the torque? Sorry, n. What is the RPM? Fifty three hundred. Okay. Yes, so here RPM I will be taking at five three double zero into. What is the torque? Torque is three eighty one. Three eighty one. 
डिवाइड बाय सिक्सटी डिवाइड बाय सिक्सटी इफ यू कैलकुलेट दिस दिस इक्वल्स टू टू पॉइंट थ्री वन फोर इंटू फाइव थ्री डबल जीरो इंटू थ्री एट्टी वन ओके डिवाइड बाय सिक्सटी डिवाइड बाय सिक्सटी टू इंटू थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर इंटू फाइव थ्री डबल जीरो इंटू थ्री एट्टी वन टू वन वन थ्री फाइव थ्री टू वन वन थ्री फाइव थ्री ओके Two one one three five three. Yeah. So this is the, you know, this is the uh, power means watt required. That means two one one point three five three kilowatt. This value is really very high. So any guess why this value is very high? हेलो यस सर एनी गेस फाइव दिस वैल्यू इज वेरी हाई एनी आइडिया सी दिस एसिलेशन फोर्स इज वेरी हाई व्हाई बिकॉज वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एसिलेशन इज थर्टीन पॉइंट एट सेवन that is you know required for the very high performance car and all okay so if we uh, take this as a considerable like whatever acceleration force uh, uh, for this uh, you know normal vehicle then uh, you will be getting some lower results so that is the way in this way you calculate the total power required by the motor clear now suppose uh, what will be happening suppose uh, we are uh, taking a considerable value for example uh, the normal for a vehicle and all uh, for a normal vehicle it's uh, very easy yeah yeah this one if we take it as 800 into uh, suppose 2 meter uh, per second square okay or 5 uh, yeah 2 meter per second square or 3 meter per second square then it would be uh, somewhat around 1600 newton okay and if we do the same or, or we can do one thing control z this is for the one value okay so this just because of the higher value of acceleration v2 clear everyone so this is the torque required sorry this is the uh, power required by the motor for a if the you know uh, that much operation is required uh, we considered it as a p1 p1 okay clear ja yes, sir clear this much of kilowatt of the power uh, by the motor is required now we will be considering this force acceleration force as a normal because this acceleration value is really very high 13.87 this acceleration value is very high so i am consider this considering a another P two, okay. 
So for E2, where I am considering the lower So for P2, we are considering, uh, we will be considering some lower value of the acceleration. Clear? So I'm just copying it for the ease of calculation. So just we need to lower the acceleration because acceleration is too much high. Acceleration force M into A. And here I'm considering the acceleration, for example, uh, three meter per second square. Clear? Okay. So 800 or three would be very high. Uh, I will be taking it as a two, two meter per second square. So 800 into two, it would be giving us 1600 Newton. 1600 Newton. Now this total would be 1600. plus 124.9 plus 1361.024 plus 133.28 this would be giving us 3219 3219 okay total if our uh, force will be torque would be 3219 into 0 0.3 and that will give us 3814 sorry 3219 into 0 0.3 965 965 okay and rpm required is this this is 530 rpm clear this is not having any Okay, clear. Transition ratio is fine. N motor by N wheel. Okay, so that is fine. This is fine. And torque is uh, this is eight one four. Ninety-six torque is there. Now two pi and t. So n is t fine. T is ninety-six. If you calculate it, two point three two into three point one four into uh, five three double zero into ninety-six divided by sixty. That would be giving us two into three point one four two into three point one four into two into three point one four into five three double zero RPM is fine and then torque is ninety six. 96 that will be giving us so 53254 53254 this much of watt hour now so this value is uh, you know 53 kilowatt this much of power is required i have considered that is a p2 so different different consideration and that is the region that is the region uh, you know you go for the higher uh, uh, acceleration kind like 100 kilometers in uh, 5 seconds 100 kilometers in 3 seconds that kind of vehicle could be achievable by the high performance vehicle so you can uh, by practically you have seen ki if we increase the acceleration how much it is affecting the uh, power requirement of the vehicle clear Yes, so this is the power required by the uh, this uh, motor. Now, what will be happening between the motor and the uh, 
between the motor and the battery battery is supplying some power to the uh, you know motor so motor might be filling uh, the motor controller which is converting the uh, power from battery to the motor that efficiency is suppose i am considering the motor uh, you know motor controller efficiency c1 to the controller efficiency is 95% okay then the power battery power would be battery power would be uh, this uh, 53 divided by 0 0.95 and that will be giving you Fifty three. Guys, you also calculate from your end and you can say the answer directly to sir so that it will save time. Okay. Fifty five point seven. So this kilowatt power is required by the pattern. Okay. So this was the basic calculation of how to calculate the power of the motor, the power of the battery uh, for the electric vehicle application. Okay. Yes, sir. And the lower the acceleration, lower the force required, higher the acceleration, higher would be the force required. Okay. If you calculate for a you know very high kind of vehicle, it could be 300 kilowatt, 400 kilowatt, something like that. Okay. So that's all from my side. So now uh, coming to you all. So is there any doubt or you can ask. Anyone? Uh, Sonu sir, if any questions uh, people are asking on live YouTube, they are texting. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we have posted like if somebody is having doubt, we'll ask. And guys, you do ask the doubts. Whatever doubts you have, you just ask it. Gurjit sir. Yes. Uh, uh, recently, I have the guys, you can ask the question. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir rip, I am uh, actually this is <laughs> I am cooking something actually, sir. Yeah. So I am busy in that, sir. Actually, sir. So. Hello, sir. Please, sorry, sorry for that, actually, sir. Yeah, answer, please, please. Yeah, answer, please. Sir, uh, in the question, sir, I, sir, you are taking the higher value of acceleration in thirty point three day. Mm -hmm. Sir, but actual value is sixteen point six six. So why you are taking thirteen point three three? No, no, that is velocity. Sixteen point six six is velocity. Yes, sir. And thirteen point was acceleration. Yes, sir. Okay. I am confused, sir. So yeah. I am confused. because f equal to m a, and uh, rest in rest of the calculation we needed the velocity. But in that, uh, we, we were needed the uh, uh, acceleration. Yes, sir. Yeah, any other doubts? You just ask in Hindi also. That is not a problem. But question should not be done. Rakesh, any doubt? Rohit, Anil, Gautam? Hello, sir. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I am asking the question about the related to battery pack. Mm, that is a means how many parameters required to design a battery meter? The uh, we have we will design for fifty five kilowatt motor. 
if you then, have to design a 55 kilowatt param- motor main same, same parameter as we have calculated uh, recently okay then which type of parameter we, uh, we will see in for design a battery pack okay 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 this is very nice question so suppose i have to design uh, just let me share my screen first yes sir this screen is usual to everyone right yes so, sir we have to design a 52 sorry 52 kilowatt hour battery pack okay for example now what parameter we should be uh, first let me open my calculator okay to design a battery pack first you need a cell okay and you have to you already have one parameter ki i have to design a 55 kilowatt hour and one parameter also you have to decide ki what could be the voltage system okay one you have to decide so just say any value which voltage system you are willing go to go for just say any value 150 volt 200 volt 250 volt 300 volt say any value 250 volt sorry 250 volt okay 250 volt system we have to make okay 250 volt now what will be happening 55 kilowatt means 55000 watt hour okay and now open the calculator and also we will be having some sale so for example i am taking a standard sale of 21700 okay which is having a uh, 3.6 nominal voltage nominal voltage and this uh, 4.85 is the normal capacity okay so this parameter we are having <coughs> how we will be designing a battery pack first we need uh, some cells in series and parallel so that would be uh, volt 50 250 divided by 3.6 that was 69.4 i am considering as a 70 so 70 cells in series and this uh, 55000 divided by 250 volt that is 220 so 220 is H. So sorry. Divide by 55,000 divided by 250, 220. And this divide by 4.85. This will be 45.3. I am considering as a 46. So 46 in parallel. Yes. So this is the basic parameter you will be having. So you have to design a battery pack so that 46 cells in par- parallel and 70 cells in series. You have to organize in that manner, uh, arranging by this bus bars and all, then packaging it by metallic structure or plastic structure, and you will be getting your battery pack. Clear? Hello. Yes, Rakesh, you are asking something. Mm. Your sound is not clear, so you can type in chat also, okay? Neera, sir, any question from your side? No, sir, it is... Uh... No question is a very good class. Thank you, thank you. Guys, ask the doubt. See, uh, this all session we are conducting for you, and we want you to be, you know, industry ready with us. We want yes, you sir. to learn, you know, whatever exactly needed in any industry. If with this knowledge you are going in any interview, definitely chance of selection will be more. So utilize the time. Okay. Yeah, look, please. Yes, sir, question that what is the function of power electronics? Controller in electrical vehicle, sir. See, power electronics is a lot of function with us. Major function is to convert the power from the battery to the motor. Okay. 
the power required the power generated by the battery is the uh, different and the power required by the motor is different so in between a motor controller is there which decide ki okay for this much of acceleration for this of velocity needed what power i need to draw from the battery okay and in that much of power only we ask the battery in that battery there is a bms who decide ki okay this much of power i have or not if i have this much of power then he supplied that amount of power to the uh, motor controller and then the motor controller supplied that much of power to the motor and that is the fun basic functionality of the power electronic in the electric vehicle